Affinity Designer's Vector Flood Fill tool doesn't just fill vector shapes with colors and gradients. You can also use it to quickly texture plans and diagrams using bitmap fills. First, I've opened this DWG file comprised of several plan and elevation diagrams. Before doing anything else, I'm going to temporarily hide all the text layers so they don't interfere with the flood filling process. To do this, I'll go to Select, Select Object, Art Text. Then, on the Layers panel, I'll hide one of the selected layers to hide them all. With that achieved, I'll then select the Vector Flood Fill tool from the Tools panel on the left. Because there are no filled polycurves or filled objects to begin with, I'll need to make an initial selection of all the vector line work I want the tool to sample from. I can do this by holding Command on Mac, Control on Windows, and click dragging to make a selection. Now, as I hover the tool cursor over various areas, the line detail will become bolder. This gives me an indication of each unique area that can be filled. I can choose a color on the color panel and click any area to fill it. This creates a new vector curve layer containing this fill information. What we will do now, however, is utilize this quick flood filling process to texture the plan instead using bitmap data. There are multiple approaches we can take here. I'll start with separate seamless texture images. These could be JPEGs, TIFFs, PNGs, or any other supported image format. In my Textures folder, I'll select one of the carpet textures. Then I'll drag this into Designer and release the mouse button over the color icon on the color panel here. The preview has now changed to the texture. And I can now single click to fill areas using this texture as a bitmap pattern fill. I may want to use a different texture for this area, which includes the kitchen. Not a problem. I'll go back out and I'll drag in a marble tiles texture. Then once again, release the mouse button over the color icon here. And I'll just click into the area. I want to fill. The texture scaling needs to be addressed. I can do this manually after my initial flood filling. I'll select the Fill tool with G, then click on a fill to select it. Now I can click drag to reset the scaling and rotation of the fill. Whilst doing this, I can hold Shift to constrain the rotation to 45 degree increments. Then, once I'm happy, I'll release the mouse button. Now I'll single click over here to select the carpet fill and I'll use the same procedure. Click drag to alter the scaling of the fill. At this point, I'll single click on the marble tiles fill again and I'll see these three nodes. The outer two nodes control scaling and rotation. But if I click drag the middle node, I can alter the position of the fill. Holding Shift will constrain movement along the horizontal and vertical axes to 45 degree angles. Now I'll show you how to make the texturing process even quicker by taking advantage of Assets. I'll go to Window, Assets, to show the Assets panel on the left. And I'm going to batch import a series of images as asset categories. I could stay with the default category, but to keep things organized, I'll create a new category and call it Bitmap Fills. Now, I'll go out to the file browser and I will click drag this carpet folder that contains all of my carpet image textures. I'll drag the folder into Designer and offer it to the Assets panel area until I see a blue highlight. Then release the mouse button. This will immediately import all of the images within that folder as assets and also create a new subcategory based off the folder name. I'll do the same for the marble tiles folder. And finally, the brick folder. On the asset panel options, I can also toggle show as list, which will display the file names of each asset, helping to identify them. 
Now I can continue my texturing workflow. So, with the right hand plan, I'll select the Vector Flood Fill tool using R on the keyboard, Command click and drag on Mac, Control click and drag on Windows to select the plan layers. And now all I need to do is click on an image asset to load it as my current fill, rather than single clicking to fill one area. If I hold the mouse button down whilst dragging between different areas, I can fill them all with one operation. I'll switch to the Move tool with V and click to select the fill. Rather than each room being separate, they are all now part of one fill. As we can see on the Curve Layer thumbnail here, this makes the scaling process easier as I can just switch to the Fill tool using G and adjust the scaling of one layer rather than several. To demonstrate the speed of this workflow, I'll quickly texture the walls on this elevation diagram. So I'll select the Vector Flood Fill tool, command click and drag to select the layers, and I'll choose a brick wall texture from my Assets panel. Then click drag to fill these two wall areas. I'll then switch to the Fill tool, click to select the fill, then adjust the scaling. Another little technique you can take advantage of is being able to drag images over the existing fill to replace it. For this to work, you need the layer with the bitmap fill selected. And you also need to have the Vector Flood Fill tool active. So I'll switch to it from the Tools panel. Now I can take any of the image assets on the left and just click drag them over the top of the existing fill, releasing the mouse button to confirm the replacement. If I drag a fill on to preview it and decide I don't want to use it, I can press the escape key to cancel the operation before letting go of the mouse button. Once I'm happy with my new texture, I'll switch to the fill tool and adjust the scaling. I'll show you another quick example, this time using an isometric diagram. This is in PDF format rather than DWG or DXF and has a lot of complex vector line work. To take advantage of this fast texturing workflow, I've prepared my own assets file containing a variety of different textures I can use. I'll drag this AF assets file onto the designer user interface and release the mouse button to install it. On the asset panel options, I'll choose collapse all to quickly collapse all the open subcategories. And now I'll start texturing. So I'll switch to the vector flood fill tool and with this diagram, I don't actually need to make an initial selection, as it already contains color fills for all the objects. I will effectively be replacing the existing color fills with bitmap fills. I'll choose a grass texture from the grass subcategory and single click to apply it to each of these areas in turn. Then, from the water subcategory, I'll add a pool water texture to the swimming pool. For the other grass areas, I might try a different grass texture. Then for the pavements, I'll use an appropriate pavement texture. And I might even vary this up and replace the two pavement areas down here with a slightly different texture. For the road, I'll use a suitable asphalt texture. And then I'll also apply another asphalt texture to the parking area. Finally, for now, I'll apply a water texture to the main body of water here. And I will leave it there. I hope this video has given you some fresh ideas for how to use Designer's Toolset for plan and diagram texturing. Because the process is so quick and non-destructive, I can easily go back in and refine the texturing if I discover I have missed areas, or perhaps want to swap textures around for a different look. Thank you for watching.